Aaron, Luis Severino made a couple starts to close out of the season. What did you see in those starts that leaves you confident that he's going to be a successful pitcher for you in the postseason? Uh, first and foremost, health. Um, you know, he's he's looked good, you know, really going back from the first time he got on the mound and, and making his way back in a in a side session and feel like he, he progressed how we would have hoped, uh, wasn't rushed. Um, and, and kept bouncing back to how we would have hoped. Um, and then really from his first start in the big leagues, um, <clears throat> you know, felt like his delivery was good, felt like the stuff was really good, and f overall the command was pretty good. So um, feel like he's, he's ready to roll and, and gives us a really good chance anytime we hand him the ball. Are you anticipating the same lineup tomorrow? Uh, probably, yeah. When, I mean, First, having being able to write out the same lineup three days in a row, and uh, the bottom of it being Sanchez, Didi, and Urshela. You've talked about depth all year, but that seems even extreme for what you guys had. Yeah, I mean, you know, feel like we're, you know, not fully healthy, obviously, but but about as healthy as we've been all year, and and you know, I think so far f through the first couple of games, um, they've represented really well, and I think kind of see the strength that they bring when they're all together. You know, I think they all benefit from having one another in that lineup and and so far they've done a really good job of making it difficult on on the opposing pitchers. When when Severino came back, was there a point where you thought that this, you know, him starting in the playoffs would be possible that there was something he did or or something you saw from him that you're like, "Okay, he's good to go." Yeah. I would say right away the first first start I was to me was really encouraging, you know, um, you know, and, and kind of watching his minor league starts, which I did on video, um, I thought they were fine. But and w what was nice is I thought he was getting better each time out, and uh, and that first time his first start back in the big leagues was another huge step. And I thought, you know, coming back in that game at home, you know, there's going to be some emotions there. I thought he did a really nice job of, of kind of controlling him, his emotions, himself, being real clean in his delivery. And as a result, he commanded the ball, yes, but he also had, you know, the velo we normally see with him. The stuff was coming out like it does for Seve, and it made me feel really good about where he was at that point in the season. Aaron, you've said DJ LeMay, he was probably your MVP for this season. How would you summarize what his presence has been like in that clubhouse? Um, you know, a lot of different personalities in there, but it, it's a group that's very close. Um, and, you know, I think one of the really good things about that room is guys, I mean, they get along really well, obviously, but guys are able to be themselves. And I think from day one, I, I feel like DJ's felt very comfortable here. Um, there's a way he goes about in his work. Um, that is really efficient and obviously works really hard, but I think it's it's been something that's rubbed off on guys too and, and been a nice one of the tone setters in a lot of ways. And, and I think guys look to him and appreciate just how he goes about it. Uh, Anthony in the second row. Aaron, when, when you first were heard that you, the Yankees uh, were a possibility to get Encarnacion, if you were asked your opinion, was it like, yeah, gimme or – was there, you know, hey, do we need another hitter? Yeah, that came together. I didn't know much about it till the very end. I don't know how long. I'm assuming it came together fairly quickly with cash, but I remember it being a possibility that 24 hours before I feel like I was alerted to it. And, I mean, very excited. You know, and I think a lot of people at the time were wondering, you know, if we were going to go get pitching. And, you know, but I think as cash has said, you know, this situation presented itself and to get a guy the the caliber of Edwin to you know add to our team I think everyone has seen um, when he's been healthy and in our lineup what a difference maker he is right in the middle and um, he, he's a wrecking machine he's a great hitter and uh, and he's shown it every step of the way and to your right, Dave Lennon. Aaron, you spent a lot of, uh, made it a point of emphasis during the regular season to, to protect the bullpen, make sure guys weren't overused. You got a lot of guys involved. The way things are broken for you guys over the course of the season and the first two games, I mean, how, how well do you feel set up for a game three? You have a lot of weapons set up. You have Chad Green in a position to help you. 
we're we're in a good position. We're in good shape, obviously, but you know, you, you know, it shifts venues now. All of a sudden, you, you, we understand still what a really good team we're up against. So um, we're set up to um, fr f just with the off day and, and guys being rested that. Um, you know we can shoot everything at you in 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 a game three, and hopefully we're in a position to do that. Um, so so that feels good. But you know there's al always that trepidation walking into a game, knowing that you know it can get sideways at any point too. So we'll be um, looking forward to our workout today, and hopefully we'll come out tomorrow. And and Seve sets a nice tone, and and you know obviously we won't hesitate to go to our guys. Um, that we feel like are are pretty well rested. Uh, Tr in the middle. Where do you where do you think uh, Giancarlo Stanton is? Your assessment of him offensively is is he close to where he needs to be or where he usually is? Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty pleased with where he is. You know, considering as much time as he has missed this year, um, feel like his at bats towards the end of the season where he got into into a handful of games were mostly good, um, and that's he's carried that into the postseason. Um, you know, feel like he's doing a really good job along with the rest of our guys of, of really controlling the strike zone and swinging at strikes. Um, I, you know, a number of walks already for him. Just missed a, uh, a ball on the sack fly where he got the guy to third also with, with less than two outs. So I feel like his at-bat quality's been there. And, uh, you know, just another guy in our lineup that's, um, you know, so far been able to make it difficult on, on opposing pitchers. Uh, Lindsay, second row on your left, and then Marley. There's obviously a lot of attention and pressure on Aaron Judge. How have you seen him handle all of that? And when would you say you really started to see him take a leadership role with his teammates? Ask that again. Sorry. Really? Um, <laughs> just curious how you've seen Aaron Judge handle all the pressure and the attention and how he's kind of become a leader yeah. within that clubhouse. Um, how he handles pressure, I mean, I think he eats it up. I mean, he, he – the bigger, the more important, you know, now that we're in the playoffs, I think you've seen just – he's one of those guys that you feel like ratchets it up a little bit more. Um, I think he lives for this kind of thing. Um, and to see him out there in every aspect, defensively running the bases, um, the – at bat quality, pitch to pitch, has been great, and and feel like he's you know at his best right now as he has been at any time of the year. As far as a leadership role, um, you know he's he's so well respected in there, so well loved in there, and and does have a big voice in there. And um, guys listen to him when when he says something, whether it's a younger player, whether it's a player that's older and more experienced to him. Um, I think he. You know, respects and defers some things to like CC and Guardy, but there's no question that um, you know Aaron is is our guy, and and when when he speaks up, you know, everyone in that room listens. Uh, Marley, I think. Aaron, uh, when Severino was up here before, he was asked about his performance, his poor performance against the Twins in se the Twins in seventeen. And he joked that he didn't remember and that it's a nun. But then we saw him in the playoffs last year, the way that he performed in the playoffs, and it was pretty bad too. What kind of guy is he? Is, is he going to be inspired the way, you know, Aaron Judge and all the other guys have been talking about failure? How do you think he will handle being back on a mound? Um, well, I think first, you know, I think Seve's had – good and bad in the postseason you talked about the minnesota and then last year i mean he pitched the wild card game and pitched great for us so um i expect him to handle it i mean this is a guy with loads of talent and the ability to go out there and pitch at a very high level and i think he expects that of himself um and i think he'll i think he will handle it and whether he uses um you know, I'm not as sure exactly how guys take experiences with them, whether it's highly successful or they failed or whatever. I mean, that's all part of it. And the one thing I've always kind of said with Seve is for being a young man, um, 
he's been through a lot at the big league level. You know, he came up as this huge phenom, um, had some struggles, went to the bullpen, kind of had a lot of success, then emerged as this Cy Young candidate, um, has had huge successes in the postseason, has had some times where he stumbled, um, you know, now been through the first major injury of his career where he was out a significant amount of time. Um, and I think all those things that he's gone through hopefully serve him well moving forward because he has, for being a young man, a lot of experience. And, um, you know, Seve's a, a smart, thoughtful, talented player that hopefully that's something that benefits him moving forward now. I think a couple last ones, starting with James on your left, Aaron. These might be interconnected, but would you, would you go back to, to Hap after two days off and then – if there was a game four, would he be an option? Would he start game four? Um, I, I, I would say that anything's on the table still. Um, and, you know, we're going to pour everything in. Hap will be available in game three. Um, and we'll just see how it how it unfolds. And then we'll, we'll go from there. Hopefully we're in a position to where we're not making the decision. But... Um, you know, we'll cross that bridge if we have to. Um, but we're we're going into game three with, uh, you know, the old all, all hands on deck. And Jay will be part of that uh, mix in the pen for us uh, in game three.